I don't think about economics as just being about GDP figures or financial markets or whatever the things. I'm, I'm a student of Gary Becker's, and to me, all parts of human life have something to do with economics. And just the very fact that, you know, the commutes of millions of people like me, right, are less pleasant because they're driving on bumpy roads, that's an important point for us to address. And if we actually hope to make our governments better, one of the things that we need to ask about is, are there simple things that governments can do to basically ex improve the experience of everyday people when they're engaged in their commutes? I'm Ed Glazer. I'm an economist who studies cities and infrastructure, and I've taught at Harvard for 32 years, where I'm currently the department chair. There are many ways of thinking about good versus bad infrastructure. Infrastructure may be better because it costs less. It's done, it's done in a more efficient manner. It may be better because it's sited perfectly or, or more technologically sophisticated. But we're looking at a really simple way in which infrastructure is, is good versus bad. And that's just how smooth are the roads? How bumpy is your ride? How painful is your, is your morning commute? Um, and this comes from vertical acceleration data, which is all of our phones have these vertical accelerometers that can basically measure how bumpy the ride is. And we have this data on vertical acceleration from millions of Uber rides during the month of August 2021. And that lets us measure how bumpy or how bad, if you like, the roads are everywhere in America. Rides have at least two components of cost, one of which is they have the sort of basic component of your time cost. They also have the component which is like I'm worried about getting in an accident, so I'm going to drive a little bit more slowly. I'm worried about getting a speeding ticket because I'm, uh, I want to be a little bit uh, slower. But they also have the cost, which actually just comes from you know, how bumpy it is, how unpleasant it is. And presumably that's both about people not enjoying the ride being bumpy, but it's also about um, you know, the potential damage to the car from driving on a bumpy, a bumpy road. The way we get to our 31 cents a number, and that's a, that's a number for the median road in, in America, is we first have to measure how bumpy things are. And then we measure how much people slow down when they know it's going to be bumpy. Now, when do you know how it's going to be bumpy? It turns out there are really predictable jumps in bumpiness at town borders. So you're driving along between Chicago and Evanston, and like all of a sudden, the roads get a lot smoother. And in our Uber data, the drivers respond. They just go a lot faster when they're in Evanston. Um, and that, in some sense, powers the economic model. That's what enables us to estimate how much people are willing to pay. In, in this case, they're, gonna, they're paying when they go into Chicago by slowing down, by, by wasting their time to avoid the bumpiness. And that's where that 31 cents comes from. So there are many reasons why we should care about infrastructure. Infrastructure is often thought about as an input to lots of elements of the economy. You know, bumpy roads means it's harder to, to ship goods over space, for example. It makes it harder for trucks. Trucks also are a big part in causing the roads to deteriorate a, as well. Um, we just went through a whole period of inflation where there was a lot of discussion of supply chain dis disruptions. A lot of that was about infrastructure in the port of Los Angeles and, and elsewhere. Um, but for me, you know, I don't think about economics as just being about GDP figures or financial markets or whatever the things. I'm, I'm a student of Gary Becker's, and to me, all parts of human life have something to do with economics. And just the very fact that, you know, the commutes of millions of people like me, right, are less pleasant because they're driving on bumpy roads, that's an important point for us to address. And if we actually hope to make our governments better, one of the things that we need to ask about is, are there simple things that governments can do to basically improve the experience of everyday people when they're engaged in their commutes. Our estimates are that a, a household that drives 3,000 miles on uh, local roads will, per year, suffer $318 more driving pain in a 100% African-American neighborhood than in a 100% white neighborhood. This comes, of course, from the fact that the roads are bumpier in African-American neighborhoods. Um, it comes from our estimates of how much people are slowing down Okay, and they're slowing down presumably because they don't like the bumpiness, and that slowing down gives them gives us essentially a willingness to pay. Right, their willingness to pay is the extra time that they're wasting on when they drive through the bumpier areas, and so uh, that's where we get that um, uh, that three hundred eighteen dollars from the three thousand miles. That's a round number that comes from the National Household Travel Survey. So the, their Department of Transportation goes out and surveys people. They ask them how often they drive. Um, it's not totally clear how much is local roads versus other things. This seemed like a reasonable estimate to me based on the number of trips that people take with the idea that a certain amount of each trip 
will start out on local roads. So that's, that's where that number comes from. If you, want, if you want a household that drives 5,000 miles on local roads or 1,000 miles per local road, I promise you just multiply it by five-thirds or multiply it by one-third, you'll get whatever number you, you care about. Um, I should say the number is also vulnerable to changes in the value of time. So our core number that we then multiply by 3,000, that's based on an assumption on the value of time. Uh, which is $15 per hour in our, in our study. If you thought your value of time is double that, then you should just double the, double the cost. I think the defining characteristic of many of us is curiosity, not knowledge, right? And uh, I think it's, it's uh, I was just incredibly eager to understand which governments were doing things better or in better ways or worse ways. I originally got started on this agenda maybe 15 years ago when I was just desperate to figure out how can we figure out which governments are better at things and worse than things in, in the U.S. Um, and uh, this is one kind of simple measure of doing it, is just how smooth are the local roads, which are typically maintained by local governments. Now, part of this is about just financial resources, and I should say the bulk of the racial differences is, is across towns, not within towns. And, you know, in particularly large towns, there's almost no difference within the neighborhoods. In smaller towns, in wealthier towns, it's more of a gradient, gradient by income or, or race. So, um, but in, in big cities, not very much. But across towns, there is a big gap. Some part of this is explained by resources, but a lot of it just appears to be sort of bad repaving practices. So we have four cities for which we have evidence on repaving after we have our estimates. And in three of the four cities, there's really no connection whatsoever between road roughness and your probability of being repaved. And that's sort of an amazing thing. As someone who you know, directed a center focused on state and local government for a decade, right, that's the kind of thing that like, both makes me angry and makes me want to take action. Right? I mean, we can, we can do this better. Uh, and um, the one city where there is, uh, is some response is New York. Uh, but even New York, there's very little correlation between um, road repaving and uh, uh, the original quality of the road, the original roughness of the road. Poorer people and African Americans pay it more, or at least they do in terms of the, the pain that they go through. Um, we all pay also in terms of repaving roads that maybe don't need to be repaved and failing to repave roads that we should be repaving. Um, in some sense, it's, it's the failure of not having governments that are as functional as they are. And I've ended up in a place where, you know, after witnessing America's political battles over the last half century, that I, I really am just tired of debates about bigger or smaller government. I'm really eager to have the debate about how we make government better, right? And often it's easiest to start in the least controversial, most politically you know, absent things like how can I make the Department of Motor Vehicles uh, experience better? How can we make our roads less bumpy? How can we just ba basically make the core services that are provided by local governments to our citizens more effective? And that's in some sense what the guiding principle behind this paper is. And I think as, you know, as economists who are trying to engage in, in you know, dialogue with local government and improving the quality of, of the publicly created experiences for ordinary Americans, I think just focusing on better government often makes sense. That infrastructure remains an amazing topic. Um, an amazingly understudied topic, an amazing important topic. It relates to finance. It relates to the experience of ordinary businesses, ordinary consumers. Uh, it relates to everything from, you know, uh, airports that can be private or public down to, you know, the simplest forms of, of things on the street. It's a, it's a field in which amazing things are happening in the technology of economic research. Things are going on with structural modeling of networks in ways that are really exciting. Um, we're getting new measurement, which is, of course, the point of my paper all the time. Um, but, you know, it may seem humble, but it's really important. And it's, I think, a way in which many of us can do research that actually makes our governments function better and makes our world better.